destroying our homes and, and all that stuff. So it gets you riled up and, and exciting. But this is entertainment. So like yes. if people are, are, are I think it's, it's, it's important for people to like, yes, this is entertainment. This is not the news. This is a filtered version of the news in which somebody is being paid a million bucks a year to make you stick watching television so the ad agencies will make more money. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yanmi Park. I'm a North Korean defector human rights activist. Today in this video, I have a very interesting guest. He's my long friend from Iraq. His name is Faisal Armutar. It's really, I mean, amazing point that you made is that it is almost like shocking for me, right? Like we came to this country and we love this country. We love America so much with all our hearts. We and do, then yeah. we are in this country where people are so busy hating each other within. There's so much hate, so much division and the mainstream media are so trying to see the hate in us, distrust in us. And I mean, I don't know, maybe I am like witnessing how this greatest Western civilization is falling in front of my eyes. Or maybe this is how America always has been. I have no clue. I never, I wasn't born here, right? We came here like a few years ago. Yes, yeah, so and did I, yeah. And so the thing is that I just don't get it. Like, I mean, as, as you said, right, China does, I mean, already importing those technology, surveillance technology, they importing to North Korea, and I don't even know other countries. And I know there's a friends from Indonesia, Africa, how China has been building, like investing, building things and make them that they have to go on the side of China, right? Even the, in the US right now, all these Ivy League schools, they are getting money from China. All this research, everything, the media companies, they get funding from China. Yeah, yeah. We are like with so many of us being owned by China. And how do you think, why do you think where there's not such a like, a rise or movement to counter this evil authoritarian what I mean regime in China. Well, I mean, another observation. I mean, there's a lot of observations I've had, but but there's an observation that I think many American audience will be kind of interested to hear. So there's a channel called Al Jazeera, and mm -hmm. Al Jazeera is in, owned by the state of Qatar in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So Al Jazeera has two faces. They have an Arabic version and an English version. And the Arabic version is hardcore, conspiratorial, anti-America, uh, pro-Muslim Brotherhood, all of that stuff. In English, they try to focus on whatever this division there is in American society. So, so they have videos about racial justice, economic inequality, <sighs> stuff of that sort, which is in a way like, Qatar as a country has a slave labor. Right. They, they, like their stadium, yeah. they, I mean, the World Cup, there was a lot of uh, fuss about that. And they actually have like the equivalent of modern day slave labor. In Arabic, that's okay. In English, right. they talk about Black Lives Matter and racial yeah. injustice in America. You have a slave labor in your country. <laughs> like, you're, no, you're they, the... You know, like Qataris bring their actual North Koreans as slaves and use them and build their statues, everything right now. Yeah. Yes, so so see, so I think is that it is, and that this is not necessarily conspiratorial per se, because I know that Russia today, Russia has also played a role in in doing that. Is that and and not to go too much into details, but I but I think is that one of the things about freedom, one of, one of the free societies, is that they are very fragile, and what what happens is that they, uh, like you can. I mean, authoritarian societies are fragile too, but what was different is that they control the flow of information. They, they, they have a control about how things are, but in free societies, there is no absolute control. So as a result, the information is democratized and you can, so in a way it's like Russia today can operate in the US to spread division, but US channels cannot operate in Russia. <laughs> By default, there is that disadvantage is that authoritarian states can operate in free societies, but the free mm -hmm. societies cannot operate in authoritarian states. So we mm -hmm. cannot establish a channel inside Iran supporting the Iranian opposition. But America, Iran can establish a channel inside the United States supporting American opposition or supporting mm -hmm. anybody who is. So um, what, what I think is very important, which is something that 
Uh, and I've seen some organizations are trying to do this. I think that what uh, the Washington University in St. Louis is trying to do something is number one thing I think with, with America is like for us is like we have to learn it the hard way, right? We know what <laughs> our authoritarianism has looked like and 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 what what I think many Americans need to do is really be informed. Um, I mean, the, the other thing that, that I mean is to be informed of, of a read as much content as possible. Also be informed about how to navigate media. When you yeah. see a video by Russia today showing police hitting people or people hitting police, it is very likely when Russia Today is publishing this video, they're mm -hmm. not trying to report on facts. They have a purpose why they're stirring these videos up and they are trying to get you to watch so, so not to be conspiratorial, because I know sometimes it's like that gun goes too far into the way where somebody thinks that, I don't know, the fact it's not raining today is because of Russian conspiracy. But, but, but the thing is that many, I think, I mean, I have like a lot of friends who, who are well-educated Americans, who I see them like sharing videos from AJ Plus about uh, uh, racial justice and sharing videos from <laughs> Russia Today about, about police brutality. So like, not to discount these subjects, but the fact is that many Americans are media illiterate to the mm -hmm. fact that they don't differentiate that there is a factual source and non-factual source and there is state-run media that is from coming from authoritarians to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to free societies that try to stir up decisions. I think there was this story, I, I don't know who covered it, but maybe it was NPR in which, so there was this person who I think was, uh, they believe is, is, a, is a bot of some sort. He created two events and that's when Trump became president. And created one event says Trump is my president and the other event was Trump is not my president. So mm -hmm. he did one event that is based, based in, in, I think in New York by Columbus Circle and the other one is in Alabama or saying Trump is my president. And what he was doing or what the bot was doing was really stirring shit up here, stirring shit up here. So, and, the, and then getting them to like hate each other and then screenshot the content of people hating Trump and putting it in the page pro Trump and then screenshotting the thing of people loving Trump into the page, page of people hating Trump. So as a result, and he's the same person. <laughs> so it's the same person or the same people doing this. So they, they were like getting people organized and they're like being anti-Trump, being getting organized being pro Trump. And they were sharing posts between each other and people are falling for it. And I think is that, is that yeah. people like here, yeah. um, I mean, I've been here seven years and I think is, is really being media literate being, because there's one thing to be literate is to know how to read, but there's one thing is to differentiate between fact and fiction and being to differentiate between uh, information coming from authoritarian states and information coming from free societies. And I think so, that is very important for, because I think part of the division is the fact that people are not like able to differentiate and, and, mm -hmm. and with social media and everything being amplified to a million, mm -hmm. then you have just chaos, uh, which I think what we're facing right now. I really like, yeah, the literacy media how to verify the sources, right? That's a very important part. I mean. I went to university in America and the fact that the entire four years I spent, you know, hating white men and what a horrible thing they were and how they ruined every single thing in this world, right? That's what I was studying at Columbia or entire four years. And now I'm actually still like my morning routine is like listening to NPR, BBC and like Fox and I like going to a lot of my like podcasters that I like. Everybody talks about different story. And so let's say like Al Jazeera or like Russia today, they are this propaganda machine from these authoritarian states. What are the trusting sources that you think in America that people can rely on? Which are the ones that are unbiased source you can claim actually they are telling the truth? Which newspaper is that? Uh, the answer is none, but, but the long answer <laughs> yeah, exactly. is, uh, the, the long answer is, I mean, here's how I look at news, and maybe that could be a good example of, of maybe people can um, like maybe comment on, is when I hear of something, I search that on the internet, and then I find, if it's something I care about, like so something about, I mean, related to my work and related to my daily life, is that I check five, six sources that mm -hmm. I know to some extent have a different point of view. 
So, mm -hmm. for example, I mean, I'm a subscriber to the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And when I read, I try to actually match both the New York Times and, and the Wall Street Journal and see what do these both agree on? Because mm -hmm. obviously they're coming from completely different perspectives. And, and that was, that's how I was able to, kind, I'm able to kind of get narrow to, to the truth or closer to the truth by... Um, because I mean, I mean, obviously that's a philosophical conversation about what is the meaning of truth, but, mm -hmm. but really like to get to know the facts, uh, is to get to see as many, uh, import, like many different sources that are different from the political spectrum, um, that are reporting on things and, 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 and number, so that's like for number one, this is like as a tool, what do I do to, to number, number two, I is really vet, like see the claim that is being made mm -hmm. and what evidence that they have to 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 support this claim so if there is um oh there is i don't know crime on fulton street very right, local news media there's crime on fulton street then i'm going to nbc abc new york and okay they have like pictures of 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 uh, stars being just like looted or something like that so in that way there's like evidence okay there's crime fulton street and there's photos and videos matching the claim mm -hmm. being made and uh and 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 really the third thing is uh, and maybe because i'm a boring person so maybe that's, that's my personality thing but i much prefer raw of uh, the raw articles over opinion pieces so there are two types of there's there's raw article in which things this happened in this and this this so it's like it's boring but I this is what I prefer as versus an opinion section or a talk show so there's there's a lot of business in America in the talk show right you have the Sean Hannity and Rachel Maddow and which is unfortunately by some people they think this is the news <laughs> and it is not the news this is yeah. the news filtered out through an opinion of a new show host yeah and um like however but what i find is that these shows are very interesting so mm -hmm. so it's like when like i've watched multiple msnbc and fox mm -hmm. and all that stuff and really it gets you like sitting <laughs> this is like this is interesting like you see like somebody shouting on the screen and like getting roiled up and and yeah. and just destroying our homes and, and all that stuff so it gets you riled up and, and exciting but this is entertainment so like yeah. if people are, are i think it's, it's important for people to like yes this is entertainment this is not the news this is mm -hmm. a filtered version of the news in mm -hmm. which somebody is being paid a million bucks a year mm -hmm. to make you stick watching television so the ad agencies will make more money <laughs> this is this is the business model this they get mm -hmm. you like sitting you're eating your cheetos having mm -hmm. a budweiser and he's like telling you all of this stuff and you're getting riled up yeah and he goes to sleep hey you guys have a glass of wine uh be with his wife meet his friends and go to sleep and you're <laughs> riled up about, about about that that your like suburb is going to be destroyed tomorrow so, so so i think is that people able to differentiate Mm -hmm. these two <coughs> with rain um like this is a new this is like raw report telling like raw facts x thing happened led to y all that stuff and then being able to draw conclusion from that versus like watching a talk show and, and there's like people like really sometimes getting their news from comedy central like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's really called cool. comedy central so, so, so it is like when you yep. watch it, it's, it's meant for entertainment. Like whatever being said should definitely mm -hmm. be taken as a grain of salt. You, you go there, you you just enjoy the show, you enjoy the 30 minutes and leave. You don't, you don't take that as it's like it's some sort of a, <laughs> of, of, a, of a thesis. It's, it's, it's entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I think is the, what I think has been kind of dangerous kind of mix is that news and entertainment became like the main industry. Is that I think that mix is... is uh, kind of dangerous is that people do not differentiate that like what is entertainment and what is news I completely so, so yeah I think using so as I said like my, my answer is that no there is no the truth source 
-hmm. However, there are skills that if you develop, mm -hmm. you are more likely to be aware of truth than you are not aware of truth. 